everyone. And I had so much fun like joining the chat before this even started with you guys. Yeah, so probably the best suggestion that I've had for the grill card uh, happened like a couple seconds ago. So Inax is saying that we need to add an afterburner to it. I am not going to say no because, you know, we can maybe make a little seat on it and grill some stuff up and then afterburn our way away so we don't have to share with anybody and just like be stuff in our face. So I'm, re I'm liking that idea. I might have to find one somewhere, you know, in a scrapyard and then we'll fix it up and attach it to our grill cart. So welcome. We have like all of our awesome people. Uh, like I said, and asked Dave Wells had already brought the meats getting ready to uh, grill and then uh, Kurt Bennings. He here. Carl James. Hey, Rachel, he says. I say hey back. Uh, so I don't know. We got a lot to do today. Uh, so let's get started because today the goal is to take our barbecue Carduino frame that we put together last week and add all of the storage elements. So hopefully by the end of the stream, this thing is going to be ready for paint or, you know, stain. I'm Rachel DeBarros and thanks for watching Gearhead Diva. So I'm going to give you guys kind of a view of how far we got the last time and I took it only a little bit further I added some wheels and some two legs you know it kind of needs legs so if you check it out there it is in all of a glory I'm, I'm sneaking in here not not the greatest view but you know at least you can kind of see I added wheels and now each of these wheels have locks and that, listen, that is overkill. You do not need locks on both wheels, especially since you have the other two legs that are anchored to the floor. But there was such a good deal on Amazon. They were selling four casters with locks for such a great price. For four, I could have only bought like two at a regular big box store. So I was like, I gotta have it. You know, it's, it's okay that it's got two locks. I gotta have it. So one of the things I liked about them is that they're red. I kind of like the red wheels, you know, nothing says like, you know, raw meat, uh, like some red meat, uh, wheels here. And you can see that I have, uh, you know, our legs that go to the floor. I waited for the wheels to come in. So that way I can measure from the top to the bottom. So that way we don't have any rocking. Look at that. That's awesome. It's pretty firm there. So, you know, things are pretty square. I'm, uh, you know, pretty proud of what we put together. And so then after the stream and during the stream, I always ask you guys to send me ideas, what you want me to add, how you want me to paint it. And one of you guys sent me a pretty cool idea. So check out this design. So I really like that um, dark stain with the light colored barn doors. It looks kind of like farmhouse and stuff. So I'm sure we can find some exterior stain that we can use to do the frame dark and perhaps the cabinet door that's going to hide the propane tank. Kind of a similar design. I'm digging that like X. But what I really like is the corrugated metal paneling on that side. And I believe it's on the back as well. So I get to thinking and I'm like, you know what? I got me that lying around, you know, and I was going to use it for, uh, let's see if you guys can see these doors, uh, these cabinet doors here at the very top. I have some very cool corrugated old metal roofing looking panels to make everything look, you know, kind of aged. So I have one more tall cabinet to do and I had those panels. Uh, and so listen, I am not beneath robbing and stealing from one project to donate to the next, especially if it's going to make it that much more awesome. So yes, in this stream, we're going to rob Peter to pay Paul, you know, and then we're going to have to rob somebody else to pay Peter back, you know, when, when I need to finish this cabinet. So I'm thinking, you know, I, I pre-cut a couple things for us to put together and then see how it looks on this cart. But I figure probably the easiest thing is to start from the bottom and then work our way up, adding our storage and our accessories. Uh, because sometimes when you get too ahead of yourself, well, we learned our lesson. I couldn't get the drill in one of the spots. And one of our Brazilian listeners suggested using soap. I found a shorter drill bit. It turns out I had one lying around and I was able to drive all the pocket hole screws in. So all that is done. So let me grab the metal panels, which should be here near me, but they're not. They're actually like over there. So I'll be right back and think of maybe where we want to place them. So I'll be back. I'll be back. All right. 
Hey, check these out. So I kind of uh, pre-cut them, and I want to see if you guys like that idea because, look, there is still time to paint it a way you like. Add some kind of feature or accessory, as long as it doesn't mean taking the whole car cart apart. It's pretty glued together uh, and pretty fused at this point, but we can still add decorative features, functional features like bottle openers and things like that. A towel holder, you know, I need something like that or paper towel holders is what I meant. But I really like the idea and uh, you guys had sent that to me on uh, Instagram, one of you. So either on Instagram, I am trying to get you guys on Discord because it's like a live chat forum. I'm on there most nights, so it's a great way to grab me directly. Uh, so if you haven't signed up for Discord, if you're watching on YouTube, go to the bottom of the description. There's a link right there. It's totally free, totally free. Uh, and then for uh, Facebook, I think the description is up here. The description's up here, you know, so you're going to see a link to Discord there. If you're watching on Twitch, then you're going to see a panel that links right to the discord so sign up that's a great place to post pictures like hey go more in this direction or i have this idea uh, because these builds are about you guys i incorporate you know everything so this is really shiny you know and uh Jalex headaches is saying you totally rock kurt benning is uh, adding ketchup and mustard to this whole thing so we have uh dave bringing the meats and we have kurt bringing just about every condiment you can think of like barbecue sauce and ketchup and mustard and Abenau is back. Uh, boa noite, boa noite para você também. Seja bem-vindo. So he is our Brazilian viewer. We have quite a few of them, you know, uh, that stop by from time to time. He had a great uh, suggestion using a little bit of hand soap. When those pocket screws get stuck or wood screws get stuck, they go in a lot easier with just a little bit of hand soap. So um, I'm going to thank him for that. Obrigado, Abenau. Eu usei a tua dica usando um pouquinho de sabão no parafuso e foi bem fácil, que nem uma, uma faca quente cortando a manteiga. Bem fácil. Então, muito obrigado para tua dica. Dá mais dica aqui no comentário. All right, so I thanked him for his tip. And so one of the problems I have with this is like, we're building a rustic barbecue cart and this looks kind of shiny. I mean, this is like the opposite of, you know, rustic. So, you know, getting another look here, you can see that that uh, roofing panel looks a lot older. There's definitely some corrosion going on, either real or fake. So I thought, uh, you know, why don't we try and mimic this? And I've used these using painting techniques to make them look old, but this is going to be sitting outside. So it's going to naturally get old. And so if we look at our, uh, let's see, maybe I can give you guys, yes, that's much, much better view. So let me, very loud, <laughs> it's very loud. So looking at these, they are um, galvanized. And um, John Johnson saying, hey, say hi, happy. So he's happy. Uh, Carl James is saying beeswax works great for stuck screws as well. Yeah, that's another really great tip. So here are the panels that I cut because I really like the panels that were long in, you know, in that photo. And they're looking really shiny. And the thing with these panels is that they are galvanized, which means that there's a protective coating on here. So when you use them, they stay looking nice for a long period of time, uh, you know, for roofs and things like that. Well, I don't want that. And with this galvanized coating, this is going to take a very long time to look old. Ain't nobody got time for that, right? So what's the best way of prematurely aging these roofing panels? And for me, I found the best way of doing this is to scuff it with a Brillo pad. Just scuff, 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 scuff. Or you can use a, you know, one of those... Um, the balls, aluminum balls, um, uh, like a scuff pad. Um, what am I trying to say? You know, the, the aluminum ones that look like this, but they're, uh, you know, but they're silver. Words, words are escaping me live here, but you know, like that. Uh, and the silver one. So you can use that. You can use a sponge with the green portion of it on the other side. And that's what I like to use. I used to, you know, I just take the green sucker. And the idea is that you want to knock all the shine off of it because what that does is remove that galvanized coating. It just kind of knocks it back a little bit. That way, this can, uh, you know, 
be more exposed to the elements uh, and it starts to age much faster. So that's nice. Now we're a step closer to aging faster, but that's not enough for me. I really still don't have time. When I grill my first piece of meat, I want this thing to look very rustic. So my go-to way is to use muriatic acid. And what that is, it's a concrete etcher. Say you want to epoxy your garage floors or you want to clean your concrete outside, you can use muriatic acid. And this is found in the paint section of your typical home improvement store. Uh, so it comes in a gallon, you know, bottle looking thing. And it is nasty stuff. I am not going to lie. Do this outside. So I'm going to flip these panels over because I went ahead and, do, uh, and did it. And if you let it sit out for about a day, instant rust and instant age so check this out dun, 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 dun. oh that's 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 a bad one because dun, 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 it's all the way over there so look at that guys and all that is is scuffing it up with a brillo pad or the green side of that sponge and then taking the sponge and just putting a whole bunch of muriatic acid on it and one of the things that you're gonna find real quick is that this stuff begins to singe it goes and bubble and the smoke comes out of it it looks exactly like uh i know you all have watched aliens and i'm talking about the sigourney weaver kind one of my favorite movies so when that aliens um you know spit or it's like you know goo comes out the slobber whatever it falls on just acids away it just disappears so that's how muriatic acid works and in essence you can just start seeing all of the etching happening but at the same time don't stand too close wear gloves uh throw the gloves out because eventually it will eat through your gloves it's pretty nasty and if you catch a whiff you'll know exactly what i'm talking about because if it etches concrete it's going to etch up all up in your lungs you know as well so try not to breathe this stuff work in a well ventilated area so i did a couple different levels you can see that this is the most you know the the most uh uh, rustic looking one and you can see that a lot of the rusticness happens in the grooves here because that's where the muri muriatic acid mur muriatic acid sits yes you know and one of the things you're going to also notice is that your sponge very quickly starts to disintegrate and it starts to leave sponge parts all over the place and I say leave it leave those sponge parts because that's how you get these like little polka dots in here and, and it's those sponge that just sits there eating through it now this one if you look really closely the longer you leave that acid on there the more it continues etching to the point where you can see a little haze here of rust forming so you can actually leave it on there until the thing rusts and so these more silver shinier parts are completely devoid of our galvanizing so these naturally are going to start to um not decay but to uh, rust and corrode that really natural looking thing really fast so if you're going to use these outdoors these are kind of okay as is you know it's just they're trying to grab me these projects you know they're like please don't put me on the cart you know we know what happens with with your projects please spare us you know they're trying to jump ship so um, I'm going to test fit these and see how they look. And because they're going to go outside anyways, this is a good degree, you know, to stop at. Now, if you're going to use something indoors, I like to take it a step further and actually paint them. And we did this with our cabinet doors. We created this really cool farmhouse cabinet door. So if you want to check that out, you can always check out that video of how I you know aged it even more and added cool rust effects now those of you that don't like painting or like you know you're not really sure you don't want to buy all the colors a really great way of creating rust is using coffee grounds and splotching it around with some glue like mod podge and cinnamon and just using those two colors or ingredients uh, first of all your project smells amazing you know but other than that it gives you a very realistic rust look without having the paint or anything like that it's very beginner friendly so let's install these or fake install them just kind of lay them in place and see how they're gonna look so I'm going to um, you know teleport you guys over here and I'll meet you there and I've been now is like careful you know cuidado yeah because these things uh, are pretty sharp and uh, I'll talk about how I cut them and stuff but I'll meet you guys there so we can get to uh, installing these so there it is and I'm gonna come in 
low because uh, not a great way to position the camera, but there's not very many good ways to do this. So one thing I'm gonna do is watch your, your audio. I'm gonna move the mic a little bit, so it might make like a little boomy sound. So just watch it there, here I go. And it's moved. So now I'm gonna meet you guys over at the cart. All right, so I can still see your comments, like, you know, over there, so I have to kind of look over there and of course I have to do this in a way that's like really close to the table so it's the most difficult way possible so I'm going to talk a little bit louder because the mic is uh, over there but um, let's see what we can do here I'm gonna turn this because I'm thinking I'm gonna put a door here and we're gonna build that door together so that leaves this section that we can put one of those panels now, because this was uh, an addition, and those of you that are new, you're gonna see a lot of taking a step forward and taking two steps back, because sometimes I get really good suggestions from you guys that probably should have been incorporated earlier, but they're so cool that I gotta incorporate them. So, uh, you know, it's, it's worth kind of working back and then, you know, to move forward. So one of the things that we did was put the pocket holes on this side right here. And the idea was that we were going to use cedar slats to cover this up and make a cool kind of barney, you know, looking uh, look to it. Looking look uh, to it. But now these are going to be exposed. Uh, you know, so the easiest way to handle that is you can buy these little plugs. And I'll just, you know, kind of show you what that looks like. So see, it looks like that. And you just put it with the flat part facing up and the circle part in and it plugs it right up look it makes it practically disappear when you're you know once it's all installed you sand it down stain it and it's barely visible so that's what i'm going to do with these exposed pocket holes and those of you that are wrench army members when i put together the plans after the project sometime after the project i correct all this so that way if you want to replicate this uh, remember to put the pocket holes on the inside. So we just kind of flip these legs so these are on the side where you can't see them. But such is, you know, building with the suggestions and heck, the projects end up looking way better. So in order to install this, the best way to do it, and let's just see kind of how, how it, it fits. Well, it fits pretty good. So I'm gonna leave that here and I'm just gonna turn this around for you guys. Hopefully it stays. It stays mostly. All right. So on here, like, let me see if I can move this closer to you guys. I'm gonna scooch, scooch closer to you guys. There we go. So on here, the best way to install something like this, if you're making cabinets, you can put a quarter inch piece of plywood. You know, if it's indoor cabinets, I don't like using plywood outside because it warps and it just doesn't last very long. So for this project, if you guys are joining today and you didn't see the build, we're using Douglas fir and cedar, which are two natural woods that are really great for outdoors. They are untreated. And the reason I picked untreated wood is because this, is, this will be handling food. We're gonna have a tabletop up here. If a French fry falls or a piece of meat, I abide by the five second rule. I am going to pick it up and put it in my mouth. <laughs> so don't judge. Uh, and so uh, in order to do that, I, I don't want the food to fall on treated wood because those are some nasty, nasty chemicals. And if you ever got a regular splinter, those suck. But a splinter from treated wood, I mean, that thing burns. So you know, like all those preservatives and chemicals, they do their job, but they're not great for outdoor things that you're gonna to be touching and, and using food on. So Douglas fir, cedar, and a couple other woods, these are the ones that are common to me easy to find. So in order to get this thing to kind of stay, let me see if I have a you know little scrap piece. So this is a one by two. You can also find a one by one cedar, you know, so it lasts. And what I'm going to do is uh, the corrugated roofing panel is half an inch wide. So those little undulations, they only go up uh, half an inch. So that's all you really have to account for. And it's flexible. You can kind of mush it down if you, you know, need more. So what I'm going to do is use this and simply create a square or rectangular frame around it. That way, with that frame backing on there, all I have to do 
is then screw it in to the backing, you know, all the way around. So that's just secured in place. Again, this is not structural, it is just decorative. So I think that's the best way of attaching, you know, something like this. Uh, and I'm just like watching your, um, uh, your, your comments there. And so let's put in the other panels. So I think a cool panel would be like, you know, to match this long panel, let's match it over here. I need like floating cameras on drones, you know, to, to make it much easier. So let's see if I can sneak this guy in here. And so it kind of look like that. And we're just kind of, sorry for the scrapey. All right, so that's looking pretty good there. And then let's put this guy in the back uh, panel. So this, you know, shiny will be to the inside. So when cutting this, you can use tin snips, uh, which is great for cutting it when you're cutting this way, because this thing bends and you can bend it away from your tin snips so you can actually have access and clearance. Tin snips suck for cutting it longitudinally, like with the undulations, you know, the waves, uh, because you get to a point very quickly where it doesn't bend this way really well, and then you can't get your hand or the tin snips to continue cutting. So in that case, if you have to make long cuts, use either a sawzall. I was able to use a, a jigsaw, believe it or not. It's, it's a little bit tough uh, because of, you know, the, the curvature or a Dremel with a really good cutoff wheel or an actual, you know, cutoff wheel. The Dremel, you'll probably eat through your cutoff wheel way too quick. So this is the front of the cart. We have two shelves where we can uh, put some stuff. So we're gonna, you know, be adding slats. Here we're gonna have a drawer. Here we're gonna have a cabinet. And so now we're beginning to kind of close this off. And here's the back. The back here, let's see if this fits. So that's pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna leave it kind of light in there. And the reason that we're not officially installing any of this is because I'd like to either paint it or stain it without having to mask every little thing. So guys, super important this week that you get on Discord or even on chat and throw in your ideas for you know how you want things painted. Uh, so let's reset this and move on to our next uh, you know thing. So actually, we can probably stay here because for our shelving, this is what I'm thinking. I cut up these little cedar slats because right now there's holes. Like we ain't, you know, putting anything on those shelves right now. And uh, looks like um, Jell, uh, David Beck is uh, telling Jell, which is a frequent viewer here, to have floating cameras for the diva, please. All right, so uh, soon I'll have uh, floating cameras. But uh, yeah, I should be able to rig something better than, than this for floor projects. So I'll work on that for you guys. So uh, I thought about doing something that looks kind of packed, you know, like old pallets and things. So this doesn't look too pristine. You know, it's, it's one of those very cool backyard barbecue carts. Uh, so I thought, you know, having this guy here, maybe, maybe this guy here and this guy here. So you have some slats with some spacing in between. Also, it's great for rain. The rain gets through and dries up really quick. So great for, I was gonna say ventilation, but I should say drainage. Uh, so we can repeat the same thing on this side and just have it three slats. So I'm gonna turn this around and kind of show you, let's see, is that, oh, that's pretty viewable right there. This is kind of awkward. Uh, and Max is saying drones would work except for the rotor noise. Yes, we'd be having a constant like, you know. So I have three slots here and I did not put a slot kind of in between here because the thought is if this is a little bit lower, we can turn this into a baby spice rack, you know, so we can put our bottles of all of our different things 
and then I can use an aluminum strap or some kind of cool metal strap that we can age, uh, perhaps to match all this metal work here and have the strap go from here to here so your condiments and your spices don't fall out and also have another strap go from here to here. So now they're you know pretty much in here. And so that's why I didn't put a slat on here. And same thing on, on this side, I didn't put a slat because we can also replicate it and have two double-decker spice racks. Uh, or put paper towels or different things on there. So that's my idea for the shelving. And if we do go with a two-toned color, I'm gonna not uh, brad nail these in. Normally at the final build, we would glue these down and then use brad nails just to secure them. But I'm not gonna do that because I really like that two-toned uh, barbecue cart that we saw earlier. And we can make the frame dark and maybe these slats can be light. The tabletop can be light. You know, the door, you know, like that barn door could be light. Uh, and then we can add some iron pipe accessories. I was thinking, uh, you know, we can have a nice bottle opener here, hangers for utensils, you know, that sort of thing. So now that we have these two, let's work on, uh, we're, we're working our way up. So the next thing I guess would be this uh, drawer situation and how best to handle that. Because I would like to store my propane tank in here because they're kind of, you know, ugly. Uh, I love charcoal, you know, my favorite kind of grilling, but the propane is just so much more convenient. So whether you're storing charcoal or you're storing propane, it's nice to be able to cover it, right? So I'm gonna meet you guys over there. This is kind of awkward, I'm backing up. Beep, 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 beep. Such a weird stream. All right. All right, guys, so I am just gonna, you know, switch over this mic and so it might get a little boomy, a little boomy. All right, hopefully you guys can hear me better. It's a little, it's a little um, reverby over there, but you know, we'll get through. Uh, and so let me catch up on your, your things. Uh, so we talked about the drones. Christopher Magnin is here, welcome. And he is saying, you know your stuff. Oh, I got you all fooled. <laughs> Stick around longer uh, and then you'll uh, be surprised. But no, I've learned a lot just by doing. Uh, I didn't go to school for any of this. You know, it's just you need something, you build it, right? You know, and it's it's okay to make mistakes. This uh, workbench here was my very first woodworking project. And if you look closely, it's maybe not the most square, you know, and then some pieces are longer than and than others, but it served me for many years now. And heck, you know, it's still standing. So I always encourage people to build. And these live um, streams allow me to learn from you guys. You guys learn from me. Some of the awesome suggestions you have have made the builds just like go to a completely different level that I didn't think. Uh, and so Anaxed says, uh, what color is the rest of your barbecue set, a Gearhead Diva? It would be nice if you could match them. So the actual grill is your average propane grill that you get from like a Home Depot or a Lowe's. So it's not like a special one. It is red though. It's got a red lid and it's black. Uh, so that's why I was thinking of all the black barnyard accents and the red wheels, you know, to match the red. So instead of let's see here this grill cart you know maybe we can add some red tones here so instead of like the barn uh, light colored doors we can make them red or we can make them aged red meaning some of the red paint has peeled off and it's just you know it's still hanging in there uh so that would be nice too so that's a good idea matching it to my existing grill set but at the same time that grill set does change from year to year, you know, because you use it a couple years and it's done. And I'm, I'm hoping this cart lasts a lot longer than that. So I got some wood pre-cut up uh, for our door and Kurt Benning is saying, I'm thinking steampunk handlebars. Mm, all right, all right. And uh, Dave Beck is saying, is there such thing as pig-shaped pull handles? Oh, I'm sure we can find something like that on Amazon. That is super tempting. Now I bought handles and pull handles, but it's all returnable. It's all returnable. So I can certainly look for pig and cow, you know, like well, let's get all the meats, chickens and, and all that kind of stuff. That's pretty cool. So there's going to be a couple portions in this project that we are going to have to join. Oh, let me go over here. Let me migrate over here that we're going to have to join pieces of wood like this. You know, and so far we've joined pieces of wood 
um, you know, like this. We join pieces of wood like this using pocket holes and stuff like that. So how do you join pieces of wood like this? And there's quite a few different ways to do it. We're going to do beginner friendly way, kind of intermediate type of way, uh, because we're going to use a lot of these same techniques for our drawer fronts and some other decor elements for the cart. So, um, you know, we're going to use dowels for this particular one. And uh, Kurt Benning or uh, Inax is saying, I guess with the gas bottle, it maybe should should be red for safety yeah like a red you know a red door uh so for dowels they come in all shapes and well, not shapes they a dowel is a dowel but they come you know in, in different sizes so this is a three eighths inch for little projects you can use the quarter inch and so i went ahead and drilled holes for our dowels you know so this guy sits over here and i measure out the dowel and I sit the, set the drill depth of the, you know, bit to half, you know, so it goes half and half, you know, in the pieces of wood. So there's our dowels there. And then you drill matching holes. And so how do you get the holes to match up? Because that's always the toughest part. You know, like it's, it's the way I used to do it was I would set the pieces, you know, put the dowel in like you want. And then use a little paint, black, you know, whatever color paint, and just dab a little paint here. Then you bring the two pieces together and you try and be as precise as possible and you meet them up like this. Uh, that causes there to be a little dot of paint on the matching side and that's where you know where to drill. So that's, you know, pretty easy. But if you buy a dowel kit, very inexpensive, it comes with these things. And this project was actually the first time that I got to use these things. I've always used the paint method uh, for this. And so all you do is once you test fit your dowels, you just stick them in these little holes. Now, if you look closely uh, and there's a little sharp point at the end, and what that's gonna do is mark uh, you know the other side of the wood so when you put them in kind of be careful because I already jammed myself earlier this project drew blood it has drawn its first blood uh, but you know what they say if a project does not draw blood it's probably not much of an exciting project right so once you have these uh, you know put in just like with the paint you line it up really well slowly bring them in and then you mush it together pretty hard and what that'll do is leave a divot. Uh, and so I didn't mush very hard, but you'll probably see a tiny little divot. It leaves a much larger divot when you mash. And we're gonna drill out some dowels on the final piece just to see how all this works. So let me uh, grab these guys, because we're gonna need them, we're gonna need them. So let's see, I got these two drilled up and they match, so I'm gonna put them aside. I got these two drilled up and they match. And so let's drill up this side and this side so we can get them to match. And so let me grab the correct uh, drill bit. And this one's for pocket holes. So I'm going to put this one away. And I have this guy right here. Now you can see a collar. And I use this collar to measure out, you know, pretty much halfway through the dowel. I am not a huge fan of these collars that go on the you know on the actual spiral part they kind of you know you can get it on there tight but they're kind of somewhat crooked you know so get it close you know and then you can fine tune later so let's pick three spots here where we can uh, you know whoop, whoop, let me back you guys out a little bit uh you know get some drilling and so a valley of fires here he's saying uh, hi rachel i'm sorry i'm late hello everybody thanks for joining uh so we have uh people with awesome suggestions i'm just gonna get hydrated for a second here all right now i'm ready to drill and in order to drill where be my my safety glasses there we go all right so they have jigs that help you drill perfectly straight like this. So you're not drilling crooked or crooked like that. Listen, guys, I, I, I've been lucky. You know, I haven't used any jigs and it goes in, you know, pretty straight. So as long as you get kind of some good leverage uh, and position, you should be okay. Now I'm just, I'm not measuring. If you want to measure and make them, you know, perfectly, you know, spaced out, you can do that. But for this uh, project, it's not that 
uh, essential. And the drill bit is nice. It comes with a nice sharp point to help you, you know, position everything. And let's get to drilling. And let's get the, the little things out of there because it's tough when you put in a dowel and if it's full of wood chips, well then of course, you know, the dowel won't fit. So sometimes I end up like struggling to get the dowel in and it's just because it's just full of crud. So here we go. That's another one. And they're pretty, you know, pretty even to that. And let's see, where do we add the third? Maybe something like this. That's kind of even. <laughs> and I'm gonna try and keep this perpendicular. I like cedar for projects because it's got so many different color variations. So when you stain it, it looks really, really cool. So some of you guys are liking red paint. Uh, some of you guys are liking the two-toned stain. So continue, uh, you know, suggesting away. So now I have to marry up these holes with this little guy here oh and you'll notice I'm gonna lay these on top of each other now these two are the same size it's just a one by four board meaning it is three and a half inches wide this one is slightly you know thinner and I had to run this through a table saw because the opening uh, doesn't accommodate four boards, you know, so I just had to, to use the table saw. Now, if you don't have a table saw, a cool design you can do is just kind of an old thing where you have spacing and you don't even have to use dowels. And then you use a piece of wood to bridge the three and you have kind of a simple, very dilapidated, pallety looking door. Uh, but the table saw or circular saw even uh, will get that kind of cut to size. And because because it's so very little like look it's almost not noticeable like if I had to cut a ton off then it's best to measure out and then cut off for the same width so that way your eye doesn't say like oh you tried to account you you made a mistake there you know uh, so this the mistake here is kind of hidden you know they're, they're kind of like the same width so let's uh, get our little shark teeth in here so we can make our our marks Dave Beck put it right. He said that the cedar has its own light meat and dark meat. Mm. Chicken, I'm a dark meat fan. Listen, I like chicken breasts and all that kind of stuff, but the leg and the thigh, people, people, it's just too much. I can't, I can't even, it's too much. So I'm just kind of getting rid of some of these. Uh, the thing with like cedar, it doesn't really splinter either. It's like a soft, you know, splinter, you know which is a better kind of splinter. So let me move these where you guys can see and you guys can see these little teeth. And what I'm gonna do now is just make sure this is pretty lined up and I'm gonna crunch it together. Oh, you can even hear it. Ooh. There. So you can definitely see a divot right there. Uh, whoa, wrong way, wrong way, right there and right there. So let's drill some holes. And where, where be my drill? All right, so I'm gonna start with this one here. if you guys could see, right? All 
right. Nets Cars is here. Hello, good to see you again. What's up? We are building a grill cart is what's up. And apparently everybody's bringing the meats, you know? Uh, so we're going to have plenty of food for everybody. And uh, virtual food, I guess, you know, for everybody. And uh, we're taking everyone's suggestions on what to add to this grill cart and trying to get kind of a communal consensus on how we want it to look and function. Uh, oh, it's Nets Cars is Ernesto from Facebook. Nice to see you again. Haven't seen you on the streams for a while, so I'm glad to, to see you back. Always had some great commentary and suggestions as well. So I can already tell that some of these, like, look at this shorty, and then these are kind of high. So either I got way too much crud going on up in here, or I need to drill a little deeper. But before, you know, before I see that that's the case, let me just make sure I didn't drill these holes too deep. I'm not a huge fan of the collar. So I'm gonna squeeze these together. And guys, see, it might be, we're, we're got good closure over here on this side. And let's see on this side. So it could be, oftentimes it's the middle one that's the culprit. So let's drill out that middle one a little bit. pretty good guys so I think at this point we can uh, I'm just making sure all the fuzzy sides are down and what this will allow me to do also is to sand you know once this is all together I can sand the back you know just to kind of knock off some of that splinter fuzz uh, I was saying and Kurt Benning is saying paint the NASCAR logo on it well nothing goes better than cars and some burgers you know the car shows car races all of that uh, and then John Ride out hammer time heck yeah so this is looking pretty good and I think we can go ahead and uh, glue it and I keep putting it on the complete wrong side so let me grab my glue here and get this clamped up and ready to go and I might need some help there we go now I'm putting the safety glasses on top of my head. Dear Lord, people, remind me where it is, because you know me, I'm gonna be like, where are my safety glasses? Where are my safety glasses? And then I'm gonna like put you all on intermission as I go look for it in the house somewhere. So let me just get a little bit of glue, and I forgot to remove the glue crud on the top. Let's just get rid of that. Gross, super gross. All right. So, little glue, get you in there. And a little glue. So yes, there's still time to add your suggestions. Although I think this is like coming along really, really nicely. I'm super excited. I am stoked. And then next week, uh, during the week, I'll go ahead and stain it and or paint it. Uh, as much as I know, I'm super mean. I am totally not letting you guys watch glue dry or paint dry. And that happens sometimes, but I know that's exactly what you come here to see. And I'm totally jacking up your game by saying, nope, guys, I am denying you the fun of watching glue dry and paint dry. <laughs> Spare you some of that. Uh, so I'm going to put these. Hopefully we won't have to hammer time too much. And the only thing is... might be for this piece right here. Oh, or does this go like this? Uh-oh, I forgot to test fit it before I did this. Yep, that's how it goes. Oh no! <laughs> I get to talking to you guys and look what happens. 
glue and everything wrong sided. There we go. And Kareth Lewis is saying, what's poppin', Rachel? Are we almost there? We certainly are. We're adding all of the different storage features. And we're getting this thing ready to paint and to, uh, you know, stain. You know, one or the other or, or multiples. So let's... Uh, taking still suggestions that we can still add, but we have a spice rack. We have... Uh, we're going to have a place for our paper towels, condiments, and next week after the staining, that's when we'll probably start our condiment caddy. And that's going to be our robot condiment caddy that basically roves the table offering you condiments. And I'm hoping this is the right one, guys. The right side. Yep, it matched up. I'll take it. I'll take it. It matched up. All right, let's do this side. And am I running out of dowels? I got two for here. Oh, there was one hiding in there. All right. Let me pull this guy out. Get him glued up. So that's probably the easiest way to do the dowels. I really like that little uh, shark tooth thing. Uh, the paint definitely works. Never had a problem with paint. But if you kind of mess up, you do kind of smudge the paint. And you have to wipe it off real quick. And sometimes I end up having to use different colors, you know, because I, I made mistakes. Uh, so I definitely like the shark teeth better. But the paint works in the pinch. And Kurt Benning says, driver, start your engine. Heck yeah. All right. So let me get this thing clamped up. And I'm just going to get rid of some of this dirt here. Just so this has more of a, uh, I guess, a level, you know, level surface to, to dry on. And so, how big a clamp do I need? That's probably not going to be enough. I'll try it though. Maybe I don't have to use the obnoxiously big clamp. Oh, too short. Too short, Junior. So let's use the obnoxiously big clamp. Where are you, obnoxious? All right. So this one is... Uh, Let's see which way is the best way to do this without knocking everything down. Put the drill. Moving over here is a little bit easier. When you see the glue kind of squeeze out, then you know you're you're pretty good there. So make sure it doesn't fold. And let's do the other one. And I want to face this beam to this side so that way it doesn't, it's not lopsided. So there we go. I'll leave that there for a little bit as it glues and I'm going to get this stuff uh, out of the way here put it down here and check out what we got going on here and let me grab my paper towel because if we decide to stain the doors nothing ruins your stain like glue <laughs> that's the worst because the stain doesn't really color over the glue real well. Always looks a little funky. So let's get the, the majority of that off so it's easier to sand the remainder later. All right. That's pretty good right there. That's looking good. And one of the things that I liked uh, let's see here. Kurt Benning is saying, uh, uh, if I had a grill like this, I paint the NFL logo on it. Oh yeah. You can like do your team. I'm sure they have stencils that you can buy and then paint your, your favorite team. Wet the towel. Yes. Uh, Michael wetting the towel is always the best way to do it, but I don't want to, I don't want to spare my uh, drinking water here. So I don't have a spare water, but yes, usually I keep a wet rag that I can just keep flipping the corners, uh, and using that because with this, you get the majority, but then you kind of spread the rest around. So 
uh, it doesn't, uh, I mean, it helps, but, you know, it's not the, the best way to do it. So, yes, when you wet your towel, it gets it much, much better. Uh, that way you have minimal cleanup at the end. So that's true. Uh, I'm kidding. You're awesome. Uh, no, don't kid. Your wet towel idea is like the best because I actually do that. It works really, really well. I kind of botched my first. You see here some of these scratch. They're not scratches. These are actually glue marks. I sanded them. I thought I got them all, but I didn't. And that's how stain will stain over glue. It looks pretty bad. So a spit on it. <laughs> you know what? I am not beneath that. I am not beneath this all over the project. Listen, if it's not me, then my dogs do it anyways. So let's, uh, the glue's gotten pretty tacky here. And normally when you do these projects, you always clamp and let the glue dry overnight. So really, really let it cure. After 20 minutes, it's pretty good. You can start working with it, but really you should let it cure uh, overnight. I say as I'm removing the clamps and moving on. But because this is, you know, live, uh, like I said, um, I'm mean, and I'm depriving you of watching glue dry. I'm just a mean person that way. So now that we have kind of like pretty much no gaps, and I also cut it very forgivingly short, so that way we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, it not fitting through the doorway. So here's our little door, and I really like this uh, X marks the spot design. Now the X can be the same color as our wood, uh, or it can be a different color, you know, but I kind of like, I thought the uh, design was pretty, pretty cool. So I wanted to mimic that and I've never cut those weird angles before. You know, it's typically the 45s and all that kind of stuff, um, but I'm pretty good at eyeballing uh, angles. Uh, and so let me give you guys a much better view. And I'm going to move over here to actually make it a much better view. And... Uh, do something like this, you know, and this is kind of nice too, because say you're not comfortable doing dowels, uh, you can do the three palettes uh, like I showed you, or you can glue all these together and on the back side use staples, uh, three quarter inch staples are, uh, or less. This is actually more than three quarter inches, this cedar. Uh, but you can actually staple in something like this, like a cheater bar to hold it on the other side if you want this to be absolutely smooth. So that's, you know, one way to do a door when you're not really comfortable using dowels uh, and or you don't want to buy a whole dowel kit, you know, just for one project. But oftentimes you'll find that that stuff just like pays for itself over and over again. Uh, and so here I cut. No, this X goes this way. So we got this kind of going on like that. And then we got this guy. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, trying to get it all together. And right, this guy. And you can see uh, the pencil marks here. Thank God I didn't cut on the pencil mark. I said, you know what? I'm gonna cut it a little longer because this is my first time. And if you cut it too short, well, there's not much you can do there. But if you cut it long, you can always take off more. So. Thankfully, I did. So I think like a cool design like that. Now, of course, it's not really straight. It's, it's a little crooked, um, but we'll fix it. Uh, I'm not going to put it on here permanently. The way I would do it is I'd like to sand this door, you know, the glue here. If I attach this, it's going to be making sanding this thing a lot tougher. So I'm not going to attach it. I think I like this design. Also, it gives you guys a chance to chime in whether you like it or, or not. Um, so uh, I like it, you know, I, I really like the, the light and the dark they have going on. Uh, we, I'm sure we can add some splashes of red as well because I think, you know, barbecue is very red. Uh, so uh, the way I would do this, say I sanded, you know, the surface of the main door here is glue these on and uh, hit them with brag nails and attach them that way. And then they're ready to go. You can put a little doorknob here. So check out some of the things that I got. But again, all this stuff is returnable. So if you're like, yeah, you know, I had a different idea. Like some of you are already suggesting using cow and pig little knobs. So I'm definitely going to try and find those. Uh, and so here's a nice little, uh, you know, little hinge there. I tried to find farmhouse looking stuff. So here's another little hinge. And I might um, compress the X a little bit. So that way... 
you know, the hinges can maybe go towards the, the bottom and the top, you know, so I can cut this shorter here, make the X a little more compressed so we have more room for the hinges. I did not to, I did not to plan ahead for that one. Uh, although the hinges are kind of more over here because they would kind of, you know, they have to hinge on the other thing. So perhaps we do have room for our X. Uh, but if we don't, I can always just compress it a little bit. And then here's a cool kind of very farmhouse looking uh, handle. Uh, but I think a, a cow or a chicken or a pig would look just as good. Uh, so we can, you know, maybe put that here. Here I have a little, you know, you know, some way to clasp it closed, very simple. Rather than using the typical uh, ma magnets that you see on the cabinets, I thought something like this is rugged, it works, it's a little two inch one, and then obviously the matching side would go on the frame. So here we already have like a nice rustic farmhouse look that will then match the corrugated metal roofing that we did. We aged that and you know against some dark wood looking good and against red that'll look hot people we got to find a way to put some uh, some red uh, michael wasco is saying room for our ex-wives yeah you can stuff them all stuff them all in there and anyone you don't like you know just stuff it in there <laughs> like those big trunks from the classic cars anything like 60s through 70s and even 80s some of the 80s cars had huge like dead body trunks yeah <laughs> so i'm gonna leave this off you guys saw the x shape i'm gonna let this dry that way i have room to sand and i can sand with impunity you know and make sure that i get all the glue off because it's looking pretty good but i definitely see a lot of nasty glue in this crevice right here that i want to work and get off with a sander so that'll allow me to do that without the x getting in the way so let's see how it looks on the door and if it you know kind of fits so i'm going to meet you guys over there it's kind of a awkward uh awkward camera shot here but down low for you guys and move this over here so when you're cutting ca uh, cabinet doors now I can't stick my my hand in there you want to make sure that you leave an eighth of an inch all the way around for clearance so from your length you want to cut it a quarter inch shorter and from your width you want to cut it a quarter inch shorter as well so that's looking pretty good look we got a nice clearance going all the way around you know once we align it and you know calibrate it and stuff so that's that's a nice color we can do dark you know for the frame a red door a light colored door you know a red drawer so now that we have this we have our slots we have our you know drawer situation now that side's like done we still need a tabletop so now we got to work on this whole situation here and this is where i thought it'd be cool to put a drawer that we can, uh, you know, uh, put little things like uh, burners, little utensils and stuff. We'll put hooks on that side for real big utensils so they hang. So let's work on this drawer here and then we'll work on the tabletop. And then that's all the main components. The rest will go on once the painting or staining is done. Like the little metal rods or metal straps for our spice rack on the other two sides. So for now, I'm just gonna let this rest up here so it can, uh, you know, do its thing. Do its thing. All right. Let me move you guys over here. Uh, equal reveal, silly, yep. Indeed. This is kind of uh, an odd stream with the... Uh, on the ground, up, on the ground, up, you know, and I'm sure we'll have some projects where we're just like on the ground the whole time. Uh, let me take these shark teeth away. They're hanging out. So if you guys liked these, uh, you know, this hardware, I can certainly keep it. If you want uh, for me to try and find the animal ones, I can certainly do that. I'm kind of leaning towards the animal ones because I think that they'll be like really fun and uh, you know, very uh, pro barbecue, you know? So let's get working on the drawer. Yes, the drawer. Now, we're gonna build the drawer in the most super beginner way possible. Uh, usually when I build drawers, uh, it's nice to be able to use a router to cut a groove, use quarter inch plywood for the bottom so everything is concealed. But again, I don't want to use any plywood for this project because it's going to be outside, you know, so we want wood that is going to last, hence the cedar. So an axe is saying, you've done a good job setting up the cameras, Gearhead Diva, we are seeing everything you're doing clearly. Awesome. Yeah, that's always the, the difficult part because, 
you try and uh, anticipate how you're going to be working, where you're going to be working. Sometimes you anticipate real well. Other times, not so much, you know. So here I have two 14-inch pieces. That will be like our vertical parts of the shelf right here. And then move over here like that. And you'll notice that this is the rough side, you know, and uh, I may or may not sand it. It's mostly you know, not exposed. So the inside, I'm going to use the nice part, you know, so when I go grab something, I don't like <laughs> and, and splinter myself. So those is that and you see I've already drilled pocket holes and I'm gonna put this ugly side on the outside so all the nice smooth sides are on the inside and I'm gonna go ahead and glue and screw these together so that's the back and here's the front and we're open now normally uh, if I don't use a groove where we use a you know quarter inch plywood I usually like to you know say this is a, a big giant plywood board not not this little I like to put it on the inside, you know, so that way on the outside, you don't see anything. But in this case, because I don't know about your guys' area, but we're having a weird wood shortage. Like there's never enough of the same kind of wood. So I kind of had to improvise for this. But in so doing, it actually ended up turning it into a very beginner friendly, uh, you know, thing, uh, project. Uh, Kareth Lewis is saying, anybody who wears a Tom and Jerry shirt is cool. Yes, I didn't get to watch the new one yet, but I used to love the cartoons. The cartoons are awesome. So let me prep to drill this guy here. Oh, and that guy's gonna be too big, so let's use this little guy right here. Just to make sure that we're square. And uh, right there, we're very not square. But let's start with one end and then, uh, you know, do the other end. So let me prep the drill and remove our doweling uh, screw. And instead, ooh, this could be, oh no, these are on the outside. So, you know, sometimes you gotta think about the, the depth of the drill and do you have enough room. But this time, it don't matter. So let's get this guy up in here. All right, so to make life way easier for me, I'm actually going to turn this around and do it this way. So that way I have access to the holes instead of having to lean over the table and try and do it that way. So let me already prep this guy over here and let's get some glue going. And why is he all, he's all full of uh, debris all up in there. So this guy is going to go like that. And let me glue the two ends together. Now for these, I'm going to use one and a quarter inch pocket holes. And for outdoor projects, I like to use the blue coat ones. They're coated. They have like a blue, uh, oh, that one's empty. We were busy last time. So these are two and a half inch ones and see how they have that blue coat. It helps them withstand the elements. Now, I went to three different stores. I could not find the blue coat version of this. So we're gonna go with the regular. They still last very long, uh, but you know, maybe eventually down the line if I wanna replace the drawer or if you just, uh, you know, swap out the screws. But you should be pretty good there. And I already glued this, I just re-glued it again. So let's see if we can get this square here. And sometimes I freehand uh, screw it in and end up really lucky, but I wanna try and uh, just get this thing clamped. And we see there, it's pretty square. And it's kinda important to get this, this thing square going in the drawer. So let me see if I can get a little clamp, because the other one is just so in the way sometimes, because it's so big. Let's see if we can clamp this in a way that it stays square. Sometimes when you tighten down that clamp, it unsquares. So, or de-squares, or you know, whatever the terminology. So that's looking pretty good there. There's no movement. I can't rock the square back and forth, so we know we're good. So I'm going to go on its back side here and uh, put in two, two screws. And let's see if I can do this without warping it. Oh, something, I felt movement. Nope, still good, still good people. Let me put in another one. So I have them like half in. So let me get two of them half in to kind of uh, establish the shape. Oh, there we 
go. Nobody saw that? Nobody saw that? And uh, Dave Beck is saying he caught my double glue. It'll hold twice as good now. Darn straight it will. Uh, toenail screwdriver, a screw screwer. Uh, Kurt Benning saying bandanas were cool back in my day. You can pretend uh, you're a cowboy, a train engineer. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's a multi-wear type of accessory. Uh, Joe G says my favorite STEM teacher is back. Yes, I am every Monday, although, you know, I had some weird hiatus for work. Uh, and Axe is all smiles. Uh, Michael Wasco saying my son-in-law has that tool. Very cool. Yeah, we all rock in the same tool. So I'm checking for squaredness, squaredness up here. And then I drag the square down to make sure that, you know, nothing's going on. So yes, there's no movement in the square. We're really, we're good. And I prefer to build things on the workbench, even though the garage slopes by four inches. So it's always interesting trying to build, you know, straight up furniture uh, in here. But let me make sure those screws are tight. Oh, one of them is still popping out. It's not all the way in. It wasn't even like on the head. It was just like free floating. It was, you see the project tried to jump off the table, the drawer. It was like, please don't put me in that project. I know how her projects end up. So now we're gonna do the same on this side and just do one more check. We good there. And oh, I almost put the rough side. I almost did that. Guys, pay attention. Pay attention, I'll screw it up. <laughs> um, so Anas is saying four inches is a lot. It is a lot. It's very like frustrating trying to build furniture in here. And it's almost like the workbench, of course it also goes, but at least I know the surface is straight. So oftentimes I have to put a piece of plywood, shim it, use a level, make sure that plywood is absolutely straight before I can build anything, you know? So it is a little frustrating. So let me make sure this is straight. Oh, it was already wanting to cave in. Not so straight, and uh, where'd my, oh, it's called being in my face. So let's see if we can now, oh guys, it is like a tiny bit too small. I gotta bust out the big obnoxious one, hold on. Let me bust that one out, put this one back. All right, bust out the big old ridiculous overkill one for this particular project but this boy did i use this clamp while building uh building my cabinets my shop cabinets oh. this big one is tougher to get square because of the weight of it like the butt is so heavy it just wants to to rock i want to rock i mean who doesn't want to rock right so let me try and get this a little tighter and guys, I calibrated my miter saw because I noticed it was cutting, you know, just with the straight cuts, it was like a little crooked. And I noticed I always struggled to get these boxes, you know, correct or any type of corner correct. So that was well worth it. Making sure there's no rocking or very, uh, almost no rocking. Sometimes it's just because not all wood is straight. You can try and cut it as straight as you want. Um, sometimes you'll get a little rocking, but nothing enough to really jack up your, your project. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go from behind here, which is like way easier for me to do than leaning over you guys. It's that butt end that's uh, very heavy. All right, we got some glue gushing out the other side, which is perfect, so you know you have a tight fit. And since the glue's on the back side, I am not gonna worry about it. All right, so the box is not rocking because that's another way to know if it's crooked. You know, if that box starts rocking around, rocking around the clock, so. Let me put this big gargantuan back. And now we have kind of a drawer. It's getting there. This drawer is getting there. So 
just double checking that I did put in fact, you know, sometimes you get to talking and you leave one behind, no screw. So this is good. This is looking square. Very good, very good. And so let's work on maybe a bottom for it and then we'll work on the, you know, the front because I have an idea for that. So for the bottom, I'm gonna turn it this way. And normally I like to put the bottom flush, you know, so the two rails hide it. But in this case, because everything is gonna be hidden, I decided, you know, it's kind of a shallow drawer to begin with. We're gonna lose a whole other at least three quarter inches by mounting it inside. So I'm gonna lay it on top like this and we're gonna glue and mount it on the bottom. So normally I don't do it this way, you know, but for this, I think uh, it'll give us the best dimensions, I think. So you drop a lot of tunes, says uh, Michael Masco. Yes, they're coming to me tonight for whatever reason. So let's see, I cut four of these pieces. And if we get, you know, make sure it's flush on the front here. So it is, and then I'm scrunching, and it's literally overhanging by not even an eighth of an inch, probably not even a sixteenth of an inch. I can barely feel it back here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it, and it's something that I can very easily just sand down if I choose to do so. So let's glue and brad nail the bottoms, you know, our little bottom, and then it'll look. Actually, I'm not gonna flip it over because it's looking pretty good here. And I, you know, cut these pretty exact. So these should be pretty good. So let me get them glued. I'm gonna fire up the, uh, you know, the brad nailer gun. It's going to be very loud. The compressor is gonna be like ridiculously obnoxious. So I'm just gonna warn you guys, you know, if you wanna turn down your, your uh, audio a little bit, that definitely will help your ears, you know, but here we go. I am turning it on. Actually, let me, um, my nailer on first and I have a ridiculously small hose but it's been working here we go now I'm going to let it fill with air just a little bit just get our PSI up so that way it'll go all the way through Right, let's try it and see what happens but first oh we're running low but that's okay I think I have another cartridge so we're, we're gonna be good worst case scenario I can always come back and put more brad nails later after I run back out to the store so let us glue people oh wait a minute I was about to boo-boo I want the ugly rough side up right because we want the smooth side on the bottom we want the smooth side there we go. I was about to, yeah, I'm putting all of our utensils and then you grab it and... We caught it though, we caught it, people. That's all that matters. Tiki Cabana with this type of finish. There. Finally. All right, here I go, people. Let's get this thing nailed. And I don't have very many nails in this cartridge, but... them in. Next. Just 
just making sure it's flush on both sides. Oh, we are out. Let me grab a couple more. One more cartridge left, people. I do have to run out to the store. Luckily, this is, I think, the only brad nailing we're doing tonight. Oh, Michael's got a good song. Cabana, ooh, na, na. I left Havana something, something, ooh, na, na. Yeah, I know the lyrics. Not. <laughs> Let's see how this looks and it's kind of you know it's it's rough you know on the outsides but we have some nice slats going on now if you couldn't find a fat enough piece it's nice to always just have one piece and, and you know not have to slat it the way I did but heck you guys this totally works as well and like I said this is the overhang I'm talking about look at that that's like nothing that's totally sandable very very tiny so it just happened to uh to work that way. And Michael Wasco says, Jesus. Yes. Uh, perhaps you're referring to the, you know, to the air compressor. Although, if I were you, I'd be referring to my singing because that's pretty bad. The Havana Unana song. It's like, don't quit your day job. Like, don't, don't aspire to be a singer or anything. All right. So again, it'd be nice to have a wet napkin, but you know, we're going to go in with it dry. And uh, I'll hit all this up with sandpaper later, especially, you know, some of these sharp edges. Now, you see here that you can actually see the slats, you know, so that's why I like to mount it inside the box if I have to. But I didn't want to lose that whole quarter inch off of a shallow drawer anyway. So I think this is kind of the best, uh, you know, the, the best way we can do it. And Michael, he is saying, yep, it is your singing. Uh, and uh, I totally... Uh, I totally agree with you. I'm not going to lie. So <coughs> uh, Richard um, Ball says, nail the back. <gasps> Guys, we forgot to put, we forgot to put Brad nails across the back. Richard, you are paying attention. That's awesome. I'm sitting here talking, talking. I'm like, yeah, I got it all, people. I got it all. No, no. Let's do this row right here. Uh, Richard is right. So, oh, Merlin missed my singing. Uh, trust me. You, you did you a favor. All right, so we have, we, we did the back, you know, so we're good, we're good, you know. So that's our drawer. Let's do a quick test fit, make sure like it, it actually fits. That, that would probably be the smart thing to do, right? So uh, I'll meet you guys over there. And I'm gonna shrink, I'm gonna shrink. There we go. So here's our drawer, and it's looking pretty good. There we go, and our front will go here. Now one of the things that I want to make sure that I measure correctly is I got these slides, uh, slider drawers. Now you can buy the really cheap one that has like the plastic wheels. I hate those. Those like the wheel always falls off, it breaks, it deteriorates. So all I'm gonna do is usually I like to account for Actually, it's probably just put these in. It's nice to account about an inch for your hinges. Uh, you can perfectly measure them if you want, uh, but if you don't, an inch is usually good because you can always add a little spacer. You know, so long as your front face, you know, matches up and doesn't have any gaps or anything, the inside you can always add a little spacer. And I'm going to see if I can turn this around for you guys. You see that I have a mounting, you know, point here and here. Uh, and it typically, you know, these usually come with a lot of holes in the back. There are the official mounting holes, but I gotta tell you, I've used the unofficial ones too, and they work, you know, fine. So long as it doesn't interfere with the sliding action of the hinge. Now, should I find that, you know, none of the mounting holes match up, uh, because I was kind of like building this and not thinking ahead about the drawer, one of the things I can do is simply add a little piece of wood that bridges these two and that, you know, then I can mount all the screws I want 
on that. So I'm just going to leave these kind of like hanging here. And let's see if we can put this in with the hinges. Wouldn't that be nice? And we can. All right. So that's pretty good. It's just hitting the back slap. But anyways, once I sand down the fuzzy, the fuzzy things that are like grabbing onto this, uh, we should be pretty good. But this is so snug that I'm not going to need any spacers. I did a pretty good job measuring. Now, of course, this is not a uh, three quarter inch like a one by four or one by twos are usually a three quarter inch. This is a little fatter than a three quarter inch. So I had to make some adjustments on my measuring. So let me pull this guy out and get these out of the way. And let's build a, you know, front, right? It'd be nice to have something to, to pull on, right? All right. So I'm backing up. I'm backing up. And Ernesto is back. He's saying, hello, Rachel. And, uh, oh, yes, my singing. Merlin is saying, I doubt that. Uh, it, it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. So I, I, I didn't, it's because I didn't warm up. I didn't warm up, people. <laughs> All right. So what kind of front are we going to put on this? Normally, you can just cut like a, a piece of wood and do that. Now, again, for your opening, you want to accommodate an eighth of an inch all the way around, top, bottom, side, side. So all in all, a quarter of an inch from your length measurement and a quarter of an inch from your height measurement. Uh, so I already uh, did that. Let me see if I picked the correct one. So we're going to use another method to join, uh, you know, flat pieces of wood. Let me just make sure that this is the correct one. So there's this one and this one. They're slightly different. So that's longer. And this is shorter. So I'm just going to run and see which belongs to which, because I'm not quite sure. One second. All right, so that is pretty good. I think it's this pile. This pile of very similar looking wood, yeah. And I think this pile is for here. Yes. All right, I'm coming back, people. I'm coming back. All right, so I'm going to put this away so I don't confuse myself. So let's see here. We don't need this guy. I'm going to put him on the floor, and I'm going to move him out of the way. So for a drawer, I thought, you know how we had the slats like this for our door, you know, arranged like this? I thought it would be my, you know, kind of need to match that on our drawer as well. So... Last time we used dowels to join these guys together like this. And I figured for those of you that uh, are woodworking for the first time, maybe don't want to uh, uh, drill, you know, dowels or anything like that, here's a cheater method that I use. So we're going to glue these guys together just like that. You know, we're going to do it so that they're, you know, do the ugly side right and then I'm just going to use staples to staple that and that should be enough to kind of hold it together we're not gonna go nuts with our drawer and be yanking on it or pulling on it or anything like that so if you're kind of doing this for the first time this is one way that you can make kind of a neat looking drawer now it just so turns out that the opening is about six inches and so when you put these guys together it equals about six inches with enough clearance for us to open and close it and then i can always take a sander to improve our clearance if necessary so christopher magnin is saying he can hear me much better when i'm standing here than when i'm over there so and, and it, yes because the mic is like right here you know and uh, so if i turn the mic it's a little easier to hear, but I'm a little bit further away. So I, I will enunciate uh, when I'm there. So 
Uh, let's see. Uh, and Ernesto is back. Uh, Carl James, people are liking your singing. Maybe time for another music video. Yeah, play violin and sing at the same time. So let's uh, get this guy rocking. So much simpler way of doing it. Now me, I would use quarter inch little dowels and maybe two, you know, three at the most and do exactly what we did on the door. But say you're not really comfortable doing that. This is another way for low use applications. Like I wouldn't do this for a main kitchen cabinet door uh, because that gets used a lot. It gets pummeled. Uh, so I would definitely do this for, you know, a drawer maybe you don't use a ton. Definitely not a junk drawer. I use the junk drawer a lot. So I'm just gonna squeeze this, make sure it's as flush as I can. And then kind of do the same. And one more. So these dimensions as is worked out pretty kind of naturally, you know, and I tried to measure the frame. So it, that would be the case, you know, so we don't have to worry about using table saws and all that kind of stuff, trying to keep this kind of simple for you guys. Um, although you can already see certain areas where using the table saw is easy if you have one. Uh, I certainly have one. And uh, listen, it's paid for itself. Uh, the miter saw paid for itself the very first project I had. So, you know, it's, it's great tools to have. Uh, you think you're only going to use it for one project? Trust me, you're not. Uh, Anthony Sanchez is saying, what are you building? So we are building a grill cart and we are that far with it. So you can see we've mocked up some cool metal sides. We have slats going on on our shelving. We created a door for the uh you know the cabinet there that holds our propane tank and now we're working on the drawer that goes up top it goes right here this drawer right here we've already made the cabinet door here our two shelves over there so yes we're working on this whole mess right here <laughs> so while i do this um i'm gonna put that there maybe clamp it maybe we should clamp it maybe and it would be nice if you guys uh, are seeing what I'm doing. I kind of left you on the other view there for a sec. So get these guys just clamped up. Since we don't have dowels or anything else, I want to make sure that it uh, clamps up pretty nice here. There. And make sure there's no rocking so it's, it's all straight. And now we can add, if my gun reaches, we can add these little pieces like that in between the clamps. Maybe I'll move the clamps out to just a, a hair. Poor, poor clamp choice, position choice. So, this guy here, and then we just got the tabletop. And then of course on my own, I'm going to make the frames for our metal pieces. And so I'm going to use, my brad nails are one and a quarter inch. It's gonna go right through this thing. Alternatively, I could have made these fatter, you know, like thicker, but I don't want like big, huge old things, you know, on here uh, in my little drawer. So these will work perfectly with my three quarter inch staples. So let me prep that. And we'll, uh, Stable on up. So let's see what we got going on here. And save my precious cartridge. I'm going to run out and grab another one and see if we can now use these. These are a little weird to load in, I remember. They just don't sit well sometimes. There we go. And I'm going to turn on the compressor so it's going to get really obnoxious again. All right. Thought of something. I'm about to goof. I'm about to goof, guys. I should probably put this face on 
because remember, it's gonna have to cover the bottom. What happened to my drawer? All right, I'll turn it on this side. So it's gonna have to cover this bottom as well. And this is about three quarter inches. And if you ask me, that ain't no three quarter inches, you know? So this is gonna have to move up at least to the top there, like that. And let me use a dummy piece and see if it'll clear. Because it, it needs to go like, oh, I don't think that'll clear. I'm just looking at it, it won't clear. So I'm gonna have to chop a little bit more off here uh, in order for it to clear. Oh, I was about to goof. They're really bad. Um, so uh, Ernesto saying, just recently I was missing your projects. Yeah. Um, We've been doing a couple projects. I know that with social media and their algorithms, sometimes like people miss stuff. It's, it's you know, kind of frustrating, you know, for us. Uh, and then uh, Art Camp Campbell is saying, oh, Art's back. Uh, you should set it up to give you stars. It would help support your show. Yes. Um, Twitch is set up that way and um, uh, YouTube. You know, there's a super chat feature on uh, YouTube. Liking and uh, commenting, that all helps to boost the show. So uh, when YouTube sees a lot of comments, a lot of liking and things like that, same thing on uh, Facebook and Twitch, uh, it gives you more visibility. But because we stream everywhere, we've been, uh, you know, getting more and more people every week. So it's really been exciting exciting to see this grow and I'm going to cut this off the old-fashioned way Ooh. Ooh. all right now I haven't mounted my vise because everywhere I think about mounting it it always ends up you know in the way because this workbench isn't that that big so what I'm gonna do is put this little guy in here and use a saw and we're just gonna hand cut this off the old-fashioned way Wait, I'm turning it the wrong way. It would help if I turn it the right way. Let's cut this off old-fashioned way. Then all we have is the top, and we're pretty much done. Time to use the table saw again. Heck yeah, that is actually outside. That's where I cut all this wood. Uh, so we're just going, since uh, dimensions don't really matter here, you know, let me use a dummy piece. So we kind of want it to be... minimum like this short so let's uh, go a little hair shorter than that and here we go there we go it's always getting started takes a little bit let's get this guy test fitted here That is much better. We got clearance and actually he needs to be here because he needs to at least bridge this gap a little bit. So something like this, I think will work very, very well. All right, so let's match it up on this guy. Matching him up. All right. Get him all cut up. Whoop, wrong way weird I'm not working uh, facing towards me it can be a little awkward so here we go there I was about to goof thank god I caught myself all right here we go again with the obnoxious noise holster like western style Whoop. 
then one more clamp. Let's get you out of the way. And get you out of the way for sure, because I am about to... Uh... We have a ghost compressor sometimes. Uh, Mr. Hemi to you. Awesome. Thank you for this super chat. That is awesome. That uh, helps buy things like this. You know, that and our Wrench Army membership keeps us going, keeps the projects getting bigger. Uh, that's what I love most about it. I mean, these projects are going nuts. Loving it. All right. So something like this is... I swear, the shop ghost is like, please stop building. Just just stop, okay? Okay? This, this is atrocious what you just did. So just stop. But if you're a beginner... This works pretty well, you know? It's it's pretty sturdy and once that glue dries, it's it's going to stand the test of time. So of course, wouldn't use a, you know, technique like this for kitchen cabinets, you know, or anything like that, but for a fun outdoor quick project, it's pretty good. And so I'm just going to clean up some of the glue here. And again, I'll just uh, run a good sander over this just to get it all nice. Nice, smooth, and glueless, so I don't end up with, like, you know, how I did on my cabinets. Oh, Mr. Hemi, uh, two, you, one. Mr. Hemi, two, you, one is Art Campbell. Awesome. Some of you guys have, like, different usernames and different platforms and things like that. But after a while, I do keep track. I do keep track of you guys. So thank you so much, uh, Art Campbell, for your donation and your super chat. Uh, that always helps keep things... Uh, fueled and going you know how shops are <laughs> all right so this is good let's try and put it on our on our box here guys let's see what happens so and no it's this way all right let me move let me move everything let me get this guy out of the way and move myself in a place where you can uh one two three All right, so you can see that I have overhang on here and on here, uh, so that way it, it uh, accommodates the the hinges. You know, the hinge will just sit right here and attach here, and it'll be covered by this little overhang right here. Uh, and so it should mount nice and flush and, and, you know, pretty. So one of the things I'm going to do, I think, is actually like the way this looks. You know, as long as we get it center. So that's kind of the, the tough part now, is getting everything centered. So let's go ahead and do that. And what's nice about this is that these little stops here act like a good, you know, a good kind of uh, locator. And I'm just gonna take a couple measurements all the way around to make sure that our overhangs are all, are all, you know, equal, you know? So again, if you got screenshotting power, now's the time to do it. I'm actually measuring, which is like never happens. Uh, uh, just remember when I nod, my head hit it. Uh, don't you put glue on it? Yes, we're gonna put glue on it. I'm just uh, measuring so I don't <laughs> with the glue all over the place. Um, all right, so let me just, so I have like a, ooh, that's pretty nice, that's about, Like quarter-ish, All right, the bottom is what it is because it's pretty flush. I thought those stripes were going to the outside. Yes, they're going to the outside. So here's the, whoop, here's the back of the box, uh, the sides, and here's the front panel. So the front panel is here. And then we're going to put something like this, unless I find, you know, something else like this. A very simple drawer front, but you get a little bit of interest from, you know, these uh, horizontal panels. Um, so Karis Lewis is saying, wow, that's how to make a drawer, Rachel. You taught me something incredible. Yes, this is a very, like, cool, very beginner friendly box, you know, of just brad nailing. You don't have to have a router, which is difficult for a lot of people. You know, it took me a long time, so I still don't really, you know, use it. I still do the old, old-fashioned stuff. 
Um, so this is looking good for me. And it just so turns out that where I put these little sticks is lining it up perfectly, guys. I don't know how that happens. Let me just make sure that we got equal. Yeah. I don't know how that happens, guys. But it happened. So I'm going to use it. So let's glue it like one of you guys mentioned. Um, and Albanau is back. He's saying, Excelente. Yep. It's turning out really well. He's one of our uh, From Brazil viewers. We have a couple of them floating around. And what am I looking for? My glue. Yes, my glue. There we go. Yep, so... A Benal ficou muito bonito. É uma caixa simples, mas vai funcionar bem. All right. like this and I'm gonna cheat now I'm going to just use my belly and kind of rotate this box around and I'm gonna face it towards me so I can you know brad nail it and oh guys I still have staples in here let me uh get rid of them put them aside we might we might need them again and so So we got glue, we have our nice panel, and let's, uh, you know, I'm using your guys' view to make sure nothing budged too much. And there we go. I think we are, we are good. For, uh, kind of tough to check squareness with that thing in the way, but it's uh, equidistant, you know, there's no, it's not sloping or anything like that. So that's looking pretty good there. And up here as well, there's no movement with the triangle. So that's good. Or, you know, our square. There. Here we go, people. Here we go, just uh, making last minute uh, adjustments. All right, now on this side. ghost is displeased um but yeah so here we go we have everything uh going well a little bit of a glue situation here you see a couple dots i'm not super worried about the glue on this side since it's not really going to be very much seen but we can rub a little bit of sandpaper uh, which i intend to do so this is the only side on here that's got the roughness of the paper you know of the thing so i'm going to just kind of lightly knock that down probably much easier to do that before putting in the strips but in the interest of moving the project along i figured you know i'll, I'll make that one sacrifice right so let's see kind of what this thing is is looking like over on the project you know probably have to sand here and there just to get the clearances just right but hopefully we're close enough all right, and before I move on over there, uh, watch your, your uh, audio. I'm just going to, you know, just uh, move the mic or turn it in that direction, and hopefully you guys will be able to hear me much better. Um, and let's see. We'll do this without the slides just to kind of make our lives easier. But, yeah, this is sitting on here, you know, but you can see it's got clearance on this side here. So once we kind of lift it in place right there, it should be able to slide in and out. We're gonna put our little, uh, you know, our little handle there, or a little knob, but we're gonna hold off on that for now. So we've got our, our drawer, but one thing some of you might be eyeing up is like, what about this hideous backside here? You know, so we're gonna have the back of the drawer on this hole, and that's kind of ugly. 
So I thought, because we have this design going on up here, why don't we repeat it for the back side? And that back side, we'll just screw it in because it'll be a dummy plate, you know, just to kind of hide that back side. So, oh, that's tough getting up, people. That's tough getting up. Let me return us to the workbench and I'm going to fix this mic right here. There we go. So uh, I think that ended up looking really well. I really like kind of this stripey kind of design and we can either paint it or take advantage of some of this grain here and stain it. Uh, so we can do something like that light color of the door. So we'll have our door. And those of you joining us, uh, you know, kind of late, we mimicked that X shape. So that's already done. I didn't put it on here because I'd like to sand this all down and it's a lot easier to do it without the X shape. Uh, and then I'll put the X shape on there. And so the door's done and we'll have like a matching, you know, front drawer and we can have a color for the frame. It can either be like that dark color. It can be a red color. It can be, you know, whatever. So uh, definitely, you know, mark your suggestions. Now, because we already built this front drawer, let me just uh, get stuff out of the way, get stuff out of the way. And because we already built this front drawer, you guys saw how I put it together. Now, because of the back, all it is is decorative. It is really not anything structural. I basically cut up the exact same things, which I can certainly do on my own because you guys already saw how this came together. And I'm gonna put this back. I'm gonna give it an overall sanding, you know, before either painting it or staining it. So the easiest way, if you guys are not on Discord, uh, there's links for it in the description of this video on YouTube, on Facebook, and there's a panel on Twitch. There you can post pictures uh, so I can see what you guys are talking about. You can go on the internet and grab carts that you like and say, hey, paint it this way, do it this way. Uh, this is actually what one of you guys did. You sent this via Instagram. Uh, one of you guys and it gave me the idea for the metal panels so in order to uh, close up that back panel I basically have the same thing you know and rather than like go through the whole thing again I can certainly do this on my own the only difference is that these are cut a little bit wider uh, because again for drawers you're going to be pulling it in and out you want that clearance so it's not rubbing all the time because this is a stationary piece, I made sure that it goes flush to the frame. So it's like really covers up. There's no gaps whatsoever on the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this exactly as we did. And then I cut up little strips as well. Now, of course, the bottoms don't matter because this is just going to go, you know, into that frame. And then what I'll do is then drill a, um, uh, pocket hole, pocket hole, pocket hole, pocket hole, and attach this in that hole via the pocket holes. Now, <coughs> got some wood chips going on. Of course, I'm going to do this before putting in the drawer because then I'm going to have all kinds of clearance issues trying to get this thing in. So, um, same deal, you've guys already seen this. So, I'll go ahead and rock this out uh, on my own. And the last thing to do is putting together a really good tabletop because right now, it's got no tabletop. I mean, it's, it's got holes, like, woo, you're not gonna be able to prep anything. And we have our loose uh, pieces of metal here, which I'll make frames for, uh, which I already showed you how I'll make the frames, but it needs a nice tabletop. So let me, the tabletop is gonna require some space. So let me uh, get to moving things around a little bit and probably don't need the square, so I can only get rid of that see the best way to do this now we've seen different ways of joining pieces of uh, metal pieces of wood like this we saw the dowel technique we saw my cheater bar strip of wood technique and here's another technique uh, that's really easy to use for tabletops if you want those gorgeous wooden tabletops and I'll just bring you guys out uh, one piece and it's to use pocket holes and pocket hole them together. So this is a very beginner friendly, easy way to do it if you don't want to use dowels. Uh, so 
Anax is saying um, red and charcoal, maybe. It might go well if you leave the corrugated iron bear. Yes. I don't think uh, after all the aging that I did to put paint on top of it, probably not. So that I'll probably leave uh, same. Uh, Ernesto is saying, for my taste, the wood of reddish tones look better. Yes. And cedar really accepts redder tones really well. It really brings out that wood tone, uh, especially with cedar. So maybe we can find something uh, that would be nice. Uh, and then Dave Beck says, uh, does your drinking glass match your t-shirt? So no, it does not. You know, I have a Tom and Jerry going on, but of course I have a collection of peanuts uh, drinking glasses. Uh, love that little cartoon. Uh, not only the cartoon strip in the newspaper version but also of course there's a Christmas time one the great pumpkin I mean this is like classic stuff uh, and so this is the fall one because it started to get a little crisp here and so I'm celebrating you know wash the wood chips down you know just just wash them further down you push them down you know so here's our pocket hole screws and we're gonna try and pocket hole you know this thing together so let me give you guys a better view and this time I'm making myself disappear completely so you guys can have the full view uh, and uh, and is saying good grief yes that would be Charlie Brown and the uh, guy that wrote the entire series and the uh, comic strip version uh, didn't make it in life until he was quite old uh, and he always wrote those cartoons and for the first time, people really gravitated to him because so many people related to Charlie Brown. You know, we've all had our Charlie Brown moments. And so all of a sudden he became, you know, famous, but it wasn't until very, very late in life. So it goes to show success comes at all stages of life. You have um, Colonel Sanders that did not find success until he was very late in age. I believe his 80s, maybe, uh, you know, 70s or 80s. Uh, and he tried to sell his recipe for decades. And everybody thought his chicken was lame. But not so much anymore. So go Colonel Sanders. Let me just make sure I have the orient. Oh, I'm already. Am I already messing it up? I am. Look at that. Hold up. See, I'm chatting about Colonel Sanders, food, Charlie Brown. And oh, the next one goes. I'm making it so drilling it is difficult. There we go. That way I don't have to like lean all up on you guys, you know. So let me move that here. So we have our three pieces here. I have a fourth. Um, oh, there I go again. Hold on, people. Hold on. So using our two and a half inch screws now, and these are the ones that are blue coated here, what we're gonna do is screw this board into this board. Then we're gonna screw this board into this board and then this board into the following board. So let's get these three done first before I add that fourth uh, because my table's not, not quite wide enough, you know? So we'll start back here and I'm just making sure the boards are flush so we don't have a crooked table. And you can see that, you know, the wood isn't always very straight. If you have a planer, that's great. I do not, uh, for outdoor projects, I always like kind of like natural, you know, not obvious bad workmanship crookedness, but kind of a natural wood. It comes from the wood crookedness. <laughs> uh, so let me get this where you guys can see. And what I've been doing is just clearing off the little wood chips that we've had because sometimes that causes things not to sit you know perfectly perfectly even and that's why you get the rocking so that's looking pretty good there and what i'm going to do is use a little bit of glue between the two pieces and we'll start like rocking them together i'm going to clamp them together oh my gosh merlin is saying what is my halloween project oh merlin don't get me started i look forward every year to a halloween project and again, it, this is your guys' choice, but I'm going to throw something out there. I love the Haunted Mansion Disney ride, and I've always loved the Madame Leota feature. And so I wanted to try the Madame Leota feature using a projector and mannequin head and building out like the Madame Leota scene a little bit with animatronic bird and put it outside, you know, for, for people to see. So I'm going to move this out of the way. So I thought that would be a lot of fun to do. I've been eyeing up doing a project like that for a while because I think the projector, uh, 
portion of it would be kind of a challenge, but really cool to do. And I've seen some people have done it. They have mastered it. So I'm like, if they've done it, I'm sure we, between all of our, our heads, we can figure it out. All you guys watching. We, uh, we're pretty good about that. All right. And I'm going to do another one on this side. And so you guys can't really see me clamping, so I'll do this. So you guys see me clamping. Here we go. So Merlin is saying, I'm right there on the Haunted Mansion. And I've seen people do the busts. So they just buy a mannequin head, a white one. And then you have to get rid of all the styrofoam looking texture, you know, so you, you plaster and all that kind of stuff. So it takes a little sculpting. And then uh, you project right onto their head. Uh, it's, it's as long as you get the positioning just right, you can get something very legitimate looking. So let me. All right, stick right there. That's pretty good. It's not rocking. Well, that's what we like. And let's try and first, I'm just gonna grab some of the, the wood chips out of here. And let's start getting these guys in here. Get you there. All right, so we got one and now I'm going to do kind of one on this side and get the little wood chips out of there just so it kind of goes in a little smoother and get this guy screwed into this guy. And so we could have done our door like this, totally, no problem. The only thing, it does leave these holes uh, on the back side of the door. Now, me personally, I don't care. It's on the back side of the door for an outdoor thing. It's for a personal project. It's not a client project or anything like that. Um, or you can use those plugs like I showed you. Uh, but the dowels just give you a much cleaner finish. And I figured I'd do it a couple different ways for all levels of uh, woodworkingness uh, for this project. All right. And then I believe I have this little guy here. And put him on top of the grill cart as well. The grill cart is becoming storage right now. And let's see if there's any... Uh, any wood chips out of there I try to get everything out and get this guy in and then we're after this I think we're we're done we got all the main components and then there's just little accessory stuff All right. and so now we're gonna do the same with these and this third piece of wood right here so let me unclamp it and let's get some glue going. And I tried to pick the prettier sides to put on the other side. You'll notice that these have a lot of stamping and markings and you know, you can certainly, um, you can certainly sand them off the words I was looking for but especially if this side were like say gorgeous and it's got a couple stampings yeah you can just like sand it off but I thought the other sides were were prettier and let me get the other side now make sure it doesn't rock like it's rocking right now and to balance the weight I'm gonna put this guy on this side the big butt heavy tail in. Okay, make sure it doesn't rock. So the table is going to be, I believe, 30, 36 inches wide uh, by 33 or something like, no, 22 inches, 22 inches in width. So that's a nice size uh, prep table area. And all using commonly found woods. We didn't have to do crazy table sawing or, or change the dimension of the lumber, except for the cabinet door because I goofed. 
Um, I didn't look at to see what was available, you know, in stores. And so I kind of had to go with what, what was available. But other than that, these are all just chop saw. Chop saw or hand saw if you don't have a chop saw or even circular saw. So here we go. Whoop, going in sideways, I'm going in sideways. And you can definitely see the woods coming together, you know, when you screw it in. So you definitely know that you have, you have some good grabbage uh, on it. So let me get the crusties. <coughs> it would help if I don't fling wood chips my way. There we go. There we go. Can the screws be lubricated before inserting them with something like WD-40? Yes. In fact, let me get some. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. All right, all that and the WD-40 is actually in the house because I was using it for a project. So we're going to go without it. So yes, you can, if you have trouble uh, sending it in, definitely use WD-40. And like one of you guys suggested, a little bit of hand soap. And I was surprised about how well that worked. You know, it's a little bit of hand soap on the tip and goes right in the hole. So which ones did I do, guys? So I did that one. I did that one. So the clamp is in the way for this one. And for this one. So let's remove this clamp first. And do this guy. Perhaps get myself out of the way. For the next one. And and uh, Mr. Hemi is saying, wood is really expensive now. I paid over $50 for an eight foot piece of red oak. It's crazy expensive. Even studs. Like, I went and got studs for this thing. I'm like, are you serious? Like, even the, the common woods. So I can't even imagine the, the nicer woods. Be right back, I'll be right back.
right, sorry about that. I thought I heard we have a seven-month-old puppy, and I thought I heard her getting into something she shouldn't have been getting into, you know? So I was like, no time to explain. I gotta, like, see what she's up to. All right, let's get this one in. So we can test out the table, right? Yes, they bet called it puppy call. It was definitely a puppy call. And Ernesto saying old school carpenters used pasta soap. Ooh. So good to know. There we go. And did I get the one on this side? I think I see something blue in there. And I say puppy comes first, indeed. Especially when they're chewing on something they shouldn't be chewing on. She's actually been really, really good. So we're, we're lucky. We've had severe chewers before. I mean, destructo dogs. And that's where my miter saw paid for itself. That's when I got it. And I said, you know what? All this baseboard molding, I think I can fix it myself. You know? Got to be expensive calling someone all the time. So let's see here. Which side is prettier? Ooh, I kind of like this side. So I'm going to put this one facing down. And so you guys can see, this one has no pocket holes because it doesn't need any. This one's going to drill right into it like that. And it, you know, it's not drilling into anything else. So no pocket holes for this one. And let's glue this guy together. Oh, Ernesto also has another good tip. It also served to lubricate the saws and facilitate cutting. Yeah. I usually use a little WD-40, but the pasta soap, or maybe it's paste soap, um, would work probably even better. So let me clamp this one more time, guys. I think this is our final clamping. This is awesome. And an axe is saying, one of my dogs chewed through a live extension cable when he was a puppy. Heart attack time. Totally. Tom, isn't he a bobcat? Is he? Oh, number one from Ohio University. You know, that's where I went to school. So maybe, maybe he's a bobcat in spirit. It's the spirit of a bobcat. So let's see. Let me not put the, the clamp in the, in, in the way this time. Sure, I'm not getting any any rock in here. And this guy fell over just a tad. There we go. And that actually happened here. We were in the middle of a stream, and the dog was kind of young, but I didn't have a puppy sitter. So we start streaming, and I think we were painting something. Um, might have been a bot the Bob Ross, or no, it was the castle painting. And man, I had to like constantly run out. I thought maybe she'll sleep, you know, something like that through the stream. But alas, no luck. She was on fire and I had her in here with me so I can watch her. She went through, normally I leave the tools that I'm going to need under the table or grabbable, you know, quickly. She went through and chewed the handles off of everything. I mean, just took it. I had to keep having to stop to grab her. It was like really frustrating. I was like, sorry folks, sorry. Gotta watch her. But yes, in the time, and it, it, it only takes a second. It's like a child, a second. She chewed, started chewing through the cord of my camera setup. The whole thing was gonna go down, but luckily I caught her just in time. All right, I think we got one more. So these can go away and then we're gonna put the table all together or mock it up all together. And then uh, on my own, I'm gonna take it all off, uh, stain and or paint it, you know? So you still have time to get on Discord uh, or even social media if, if you still prefer that. Did I do that one after I took? I was about to double screw it. Double screw it. All right. 
we are good, I think. So let's see what this uh, looks like over here. And I'm going to meet you guys over on uh, this table here. And there we are. I'm just going to change the mic now. So it might make some boomy noises, some obnoxious noises, but there we go. And I'm going to start by getting our stuff kind of set up. So of course, this hole in the back is going to be covered by a similar texture of this. So we're just going to leave that off for now and I'll just repeat what I did over here, uh, there. So let's see, it kind of makes it easier that it's not back there for this. All right, so I'm going to just kind of gently rest this over here. Maybe I'll bring this guy a little closer to you guys. There we go. All right, so this is our door, which is going to have our X pattern. So let's see if I can let it stay. Oh, don't touch it. It's kind of crooked in there, but you know, maybe it'll stay. And we have our pallets. We're going to have straps to hold our double spice rack. We have a taller spice rack on the bottom. Maybe you want to put bottles of wine, beer. Uh, we can put a cooler down here, you know, with ice and stuff. Somebody had mentioned uh, dry ice for seafood and shrimp, you know, or something like that. We could put like a dry ice contraption in here that pumps via a tube uh, dry ice into uh, something, you know, like um, keeps it like nice and cold. Uh, so that side's pretty much done. We have hooks to hang our utensils and stuff. We can put a pipe, uh, a pipe type of uh, thing that attaches, you know, over there and then shoots up and then we can put a paper towel holder on that. So, you know, lots of options with those legs over there. But now let's get this tabletop up here. And we have, of course, our metal sides. And let's see if I can he-man this thing over. And I am covered in wood chips. But I don't care. Ooh, that makes a nice scraping sound. There we go. And See if I can get this kind of centered a little bit and move this back so you guys can see the whole thing in its entire glory. Oh, wrong way. Wrong way, people. Oh no! But I'm going to try and squeeze my way through here. But guys, I think this is looking pretty good. I'm just going to hold this over here. So we have come up with some cool, like you said, animal uh, type of poles. I'm going to look for those. But this is kind of our cart, uh, you know, with the X. So we just have to figure out a way to paint it. You guys have thrown a lot of red. Uh, so we're going to find a way to add some red on this because I think it'll look really, really cool. And here's our tabletop. We have a nice overhang here uh, on all sides uh, so we can have a nice big prep area. And I'm just going to move this because this is going to cause problems. And I'm going to slowly try and rotate it around. For those of you that joined kind of late, we uh, created these, uh, you know, these cool metal panels. And we aged them using muriatic acid outside. And so I just have to make a frame on the back end so we have something to screw them in. They're just kind of hanging here for now. And the reason is it would be very annoying to try and mask and paint around this. So I'm gonna pop them off so I can stain paint to do whatever on this. And then on the other side, this is the back side of our cabinet. I'm just like uh, turning this around and I'll make sure you guys can see. Same thing, this is kind of just loosely hanging in here. And we have our naked back, which we're gonna repeat the drawer front pattern on the back here. And that should cover this whole situation here. And I'll install that first before then putting in here. We have drawer slides that'll go in here. These are open, you know, they're just slat shelves. And then, let's see, I'm giving you the entire tour here. Looking through the slats, you can see we have another vertical piece, which I'm gonna attach. So I'm gonna pull all this, like all the stuff that's, 
you know, not attached, pull it all off so I can stain it and or paint it separately, make my life easy this time. Uh, and then I think we're ready. Uh, some of the features I'm gonna add are, of course, a hook for the utensils, uh, some kind of cool paper towel. You know, maybe we can use iron piping, you know, to hook a paper towel on. We can also, one idea I had, uh, these ugh, pocket holes here. I have plugs for them, you know, because originally we were going to slack this all up so they weren't going to be seen. But one thing I can do is get two iron pipe flanges or just one iron pipe flange and then a pipe and you can put a roll of aluminum foil as well. So it can be a paper towel or aluminum foil or you can do one on each side, you know. So there's a lot of like those little accessories. Of course, a bottle opener. We need a bottle opener up in here. So those are the accessories I have as of yet, if you guys think of other accessories, definitely chime in and chime in with the colors. And next week, you should see the revealed color, you know, so that way you guys don't have to watch paint dry. And then we're going to be adding some of our tech components to it. So I'm going to meet you guys over here, over here. All right. And I'm just going to flip the mic, flip the mic. All right, so um, we have our all of our features, all of our storage features is done, are done. Uh, so we got to a place where we wanted to get to tonight. So now it's ready for stain and or paint. Uh, then we put all the hardware on and now it's time to figure out the tech stuff we want. So we're definitely gonna build our robot caddy and we're gonna use a line following robot type of I don't want to say technology, but we're just kind of borrow from that. Uh, that way we can have a tablecloth or we can use black uh, painter's tape and just make a path for it. And it's just going to take the condiments back and forth from the table. Because you know what happens when you grab that burger and you're like mm, into that burger or them ribs. The last thing you want is for somebody down the table saying, can you pass me the barbecue sauce or the ketchup or the mustard? And you have like all this deliciousness and your fingers are, you know, maybe not so great. Uh, you don't want to put that down and have to pass some stuff. So that's why we're going to have our robot caddy that's going to be going around. And who knows, maybe we can store him somewhere on the cart. Uh, another cool thing we can do is maybe add some lighting so that way through our smoker thermometers or meat temperature thermometers, it can alert it to us to when it's done. So say it's winter, you don't want to sit outside waiting the whole time. When you see the cart turn green, yellow, red, whatever, you know it's set to your appropriate temperature. Uh, so those are some ideas. You guys can throw out other ideas, but man, we got a lot done. So uh, number one is saying, are you going to brand a logo or symbol or even the labels of spots onto the wood? Maybe, uh, because this is untreated wood, we can definitely use, um, if you've ever like burned wood and use like a burning technique, it makes the wood look really, really cool. Like I would never do that with treated wood because mm, toxins, breathing all that in. So that's a great idea. It makes it look all tiger striped and things. So, you know, barbecue is all about fire. So number one has a really good idea. Mr. Hemi two. To you one says, good job. Yeah, I really like the way it turned out. Uh, and Axe is saying, very nice. I hadn't seen the aging. Uh, reminds me of the Australian Outback. It definitely does. Or just barbecue joints, you know? Mad Max territory. Corrugated iron is very uh, popular in the country. It is. And so this is like a country, um, you know, kind of a... Uh, barbecue buffet little table but also a cool cart that doesn't overshadow your you know your actual grill uh, that's one of the reasons I didn't incorporate a grill into it because that starts to like complicate it then what if you need to change the grill out you know and all that kind of stuff so this is something that you can use for a very very long time Ernesto was saying oops when the boards were screwed together at an angle they lost the flat um, so I'm imagining who lost the flat? The top board or something with the drawer or something with the um, cabinet door? Yes, which one lost the flat? Um, so far, nothing is like rocking, like it's it's not flat. So hopefully it didn't lose too much of the flat. Uh, but, uh, you know, of course, I'll check everything over, sand anything down that uh, we have. He said the, the top board. All right. So not too 
like the two boards there, uh, it's because the board, say this is the board, you know, right here. Uh, the board, those two pieces in particular, have a natural twist like that. This is exaggerated, but they have a natural twist. Now, if I had a planer, I'd stick those things through a planer, you know, to make sure that the boards are perfectly untwisted like this. You know, this is an exaggerated twist. So that's, I think, what you're seeing. And I noticed when I was screwing them in, I was like, mm, these two, the, the two closest to the camera are pretty straight. The two in the back have a twist, you know, like this. But I think we should be good there. It's not a huge, huge twist. So we'll see if I need to shim anything on the underneath. Now, the way I'm going to attach that is I'm not going to glue it to the frame and then screw it. Uh, only because the tops of these things receive the most weather, the rain on top of it, the snow on top of it. So I want to leave it such that I can unscrew the top and replace it with another top. So once the top is in where I want, I'm gonna clamp it down. And then from underneath, I'm going to use two and a half ish, you know, inch wood screws. So not the pocket hole screws, but regular wood screws and drive it up and screw them down this way. Like on my uh, workbench, you've seen screws driven down, you know, this way to hold it. It is not glued down. That way I can beat the top up as much as I want, unscrew it and then put another fresh top to it. So uh, Ernesto is saying the cart, I notice it when, ro oh, when you rotate the cart, okay. And David Beck is saying also the top board. So yes, there's definitely two top boards that I see are scalloped, I guess is, is the terminology, or twisted a little. So they're straight on the left side, or my right side, and they're, they're twisted on the left side. So that is a definite, uh, but not enough to really affect anything, I don't think. But we'll see next time once everything is sanded and painted how noticeable it is. Uh, and then Inas is saying, it looks fine to me. It's been fantastic to see you created from scratch. Yes, all in all, a lot of us are gonna go buy lumber that maybe isn't the straightest, uh, but listen, it's functional. We're gonna eat off of it, you know? And uh, a lot of it is fixable with sanding. If you have a planer, even better, because then you can get everything super, super straight. Uh, and then Ernesto is saying they look like sawtooths. Indeed. Um, so thank you guys for, for joining me. Dave Beck is saying the twist looks natural. Barbecue is messy. After a brunch, uh, bunch of sauce, who will notice? Listen, that is true. This thing is going to get sauced up uh, from, from the very first go. So it's ready. I'm excited. So guys, do not forget to input your ideas. Even if you want to send it to me via social media, if you join a Discord, you'll be able to put all of your ideas using pictures to kind of show me what you want, you know, kind of like this guy right here uh, with this, you know, kind of idea. It is definitely missing some red. I uh, agree with you guys there. Uh, and then Ernesto is saying uh, he's got a good tip. Uh, maybe it needed a little pressure from above when putting in the screws. Yes, if we had some like crates that we could put on top, it probably would have untwisted it just enough to straighten out those uh, little scalloped edges. So guys, suggestions, uh, some tech things that you want to see added to this, painting schemes. And I'm going to catch you guys next Monday. And Ernesto is saying, thanks for sharing your projects. As always, amazing. Oh, I had an amazing time with you guys. And uh, project plans and a bonus project. We're actually turning a light bulb into a plasma globe, which then we're going to make a lamp uh, with a dragon. So somehow I have to sculpt a dragon now. Yes, this is a Wrench Army exclusive build. So if you haven't checked out the Wrench Army, please do so. Uh, you get bonus projects, a bonus stream, plus project plans for all of the projects. So I make all the mistakes live. And then on the project plan, I make it all perfect. And people are like, oh, she knows what she's doing. You know, it's because we've, we've had a dry run. So it's like the Monday morning quarterback to these live streams basically is what these project plans are. So we have some fun ones coming up for Wrench Army and our previous uh, Frank and Lightning Detector. All those project plans are coming out. I'm like busting through them and then uh, wrapping it up over the weekend. So you'll be able to download. Also, Wrench Army members can access our entire archive of live streams unedited like the full stream so you can get all the commentary all the mistakes you know that we make uh, other than that I'm here every Monday free for all of you guys and then we kind of package down each stream into a quick 
uh, highlight reel. So in case you missed anything. So thanks again, guys, for joining me on a Monday night. And I will see you next time. Wrench Army members, we are going to be doing some high voltage this coming Wednesday. High voltage time. Yes, I'm going to prepare my, my long chicken stick, you know, to, to poke the, the high voltage wires. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.